Coming up, he's about to fly pole to pole, find out what the plan is. Some new features in one of the most popular EFBs. Drones carrying human organs. And honoring a group that serves our nation's combat wounded veterans. AOPA Live this week begins in just a moment. Celebrate 20 years of Sonics aircraft by building and flying your dream. Quick handling, fun and capable kit aircraft models to suit your flying passions. Get the best performance per dollar with Sonics aircraft. This is AOPA Live This Week with Tom Haynes and Melissa Rudinger. Several innovations in technology this week. Thanks for joining us. The folks at ForeFlight continue to add enhancements to their popular flight planning app. They're now doing monthly software updates and just released this week, Synthetic Vision for the iPhone. We're now putting an, like an iPhone mount uh, on the window. So now when I fly, for instance, I've got uh, my iPad on a knee board and a knee strap, uh, and now I have the iPhone up uh, on uh, the side mount as well. So. Uh, I'm getting basically you know, multi sort of PFD or MFD capabilities by having uh, two screens in the cockpit. I'll have a Stratus or a Sentry uh, in the airplane, I'll connect to that uh, and I'll get that extra uh, situational display there um, and so now I can see sort of traffic and terrain ahead of me there while I'm referencing you know, maps and charts or documents and things like that. They've also tweaked the software to take advantage of everything in the new iPad Pro. We think this is probably one of the best devices for aviation that they've put out uh, in a number of years. And if you're a business flyer or just want to be able to quickly answer, when will we get there? The new Trip Assistant. Trip Assistant helps pilots and non-pilots answer that question, which is what time do we need to leave to arrive somewhere? Um, regardless of what type of airplane uh, you're flying, it'll optimize a flight plan, it'll pick the route, uh, and then if you have to stop, it'll actually compute and suggest a, a range of fuel stops for you based on the fuel price and the total cost of the trip. So. If I want to take my diamond to, up to Frederick uh, and do a long cross country, I just punch in my address in Houston, uh, the address of AOPA in Frederick, hit go, and it's going to figure out everywhere I need to stop and the uh, total trip time uh, in under a couple of seconds. You know, Tyson told me that this uh, trip assistant came out of something that they called a hackathon, where they just yeah. sort of blew sky and said, well, what can we do? And then let's see if we can do it. So it's, it's looking, it even looks at the uh, surface traffic. So if you're coming into Washington in the morning, it's going to tell you that it's going to be a long <laughs> drive. <laughs> yeah, well, good, li good, good luck with that. And great to see that synthetic on the phone, too. That's pretty clever use of, the, of a second device. It, it is indeed. And if you think about it, the, uh, the newer iPhones, the larger iPhones, right. you're going to give you a display that is as, as large as a G5, so yeah. it's re really handy to have yeah, in the cockpit. It is. Yeah, we've got more technology to talk about. This one's been a long time coming, but the Sky Beacon is now STC'd. UAvionics says they have received an approved model list supplemental type certificate from the FAA, and that authorizes installation of its TSO Sky Beacon. It's a wingtip mounted ADSB out system with integral position light and strobe that sells for about $1,850 and satisfies the 2020 mandate. The company had faced delays in the process. The Sky Beacon does qualify for the $500 FAA rebate. Find more information on their website. It's a group dedicated to transporting wounded veterans to appointments via general aviation. Now a new film sheds the spotlight or shines a spotlight on the Veterans Airlift Command. For Military Merit is a new feature-length documentary from filmmaker Nick Coleman. The movie highlights the work the group does. And as you probably know, VAC is a volunteer network of cabin-class aircraft owners. They provide transportation for post-9-11 combat wounded veterans and their families. It was started by Walt Fricke. Now the group is thousands strong and has the support of many influential people. When I retired, I had an airplane, and I thought, well, I'll start this transportation service for combat wounded with my airplane. And, and a friend of mine challenged me and said, you can't keep this idea to yourself. It's, you know, you need to create a national network and do this, and with your connections and that sort of thing, you could probably succeed. I mean, these guys who've been in the hospital for months and sometimes years at a time are physically debilitated by the experience. And so it's a, it's a challenge. Walt would pick him up at the nearest airport, one of his pilots, pick him up at the nearest airport, drop him off where they need to be, bring the families to him if they're in extremis, uh, get them around, and just the convenience of doing that 
is extraordinarily helpful to them. We started back to the Target building. When we got back, it was just complete chaos. A few steps later, I ended up stepping on a pressure plate IED, flew through the air, hit the ground. In that moment, I knew that you know, it was me that stepped on it. The first flight we ever took with Veterans Airlift Command, our, one of our liaisons had booked it, so Veterans Airlift Command had reached out to them. So I really didn't know what it was, and then we showed up and it was a private flight and I was floored. There was no you know, check lines and security and all this stuff, and they weren't going through all of our bags, and it was such a relief. And then they said, you know, if you need any, any other flights um, further on down the road, we're here to help you for as long as you need our help. And I was ecstatic. It is such a relief. The mental stress and anxiety that you go through prior to getting on a commercial flight is just, it's gone because you don't have to deal with it, with any of that. You can find the film on Facebook. Just search for Military Merit. Great thing that Walt put together there. It is. It's a remarkable program that he's built and the access that he has to people and airplanes. And uh, it's, it's, it's really good work. And he has a pretty cool looking airplane and RV too. He does. <laughs> Well, drones are the future of delivery, if you ask Amazon, but medical professionals are also eyeing their use. A University of Maryland team of drone experts and an organ transplant surgeon demonstrated how drones could soon be a vital link in a transportation chain that connects human organs with patients who need them. A test flight back in April carried a human kidney over three miles. It was part of a study released this month. The team says it shows organs can be transported by drone and arrive still viable for transplantation. NAOP and other aviation groups are speaking out against a proposed rule in New Mexico. The New Mexico Department of Game and Fish had proposed a new rule related to using aircraft in hunting areas. The rule makes it illegal for anyone to use an aircraft for the purpose of hunting or to assist in locating animals. However, pilots fear the proposed rule will cause innocent pilots to get caught up in attempts to identify those illegally using the aircraft for game spotting. The OPA's regional manager sent this letter to the Department of Game and Fish explaining why it's a bad idea. The agency is expected to vote on the proposed regulation this week. A big opportunity for a high school senior, California Aeronautical University is offering a $150,000 scholarship to one worthy student. The Dreams Take Flight scholarship will go towards the cost of CAU's three-year Bachelor of Science in Aeronautics degree. Applicants must be a current high school senior and have a grade point average of 2.5 or better. Find all the requirements and how to apply on our website. And speaking of learning to fly, you'd be hard pressed to find a pilot who hasn't learned something from watching John and Martha King over the years. Their King School's videos training courses have been a staple in the industry for decades. And now the dynamic duo is being honored in a big way. They are among the 2019 class to be enshrined in the National Aviation Hall of Fame. Congratulations, John and Martha, for a well-deserved honor. Yeah, John and Martha have really been a special thing in our in our community for so many years. <laughs> they they really have, and I've told the story to you guys about uh, you know you're famous when in the middle of nowhere Botswana pumping fuel into an airplane, which was where I was with John and Martha once, and line guy comes up to you and says to John and Martha, "Hey, you you I know you guys. You taught me to fly." So. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the amazing. definition of fame and aviation, I think. <laughs> it is indeed. <laughs> well, coming up after the break, you can't always rely on your GPS. And tweaking a turbo commander for polar circumnavigation. You're watching AOPA Live this week. From the beginning, Garmin has been the leader in ADSB development. Since the early proof of concept days of ADSB in the late 1990s, We've been actively involved in delivering to pilots the most complete picture of traffic to increase awareness and enhance safety in any airspace. Welcome back. The number of military GPS interference test sites is growing, and so is the frequency of their use. AOPA wants you to be aware of the potential hazard to navigation. It's happening all over. The military is now utilizing it in more of their military ranges such as at Powder River Training Complex, such as in Michigan, um, Fort Knox. Um, and we're also starting to see it in other testing locations, such as Cape Canaveral, uh, Destin, Florida, in uh, the Panhandle of Florida, as well as up by Fort Drum, New York, and on the East Coast. So it's really um, affecting newer locations, more pilots. 
Rune Duke with AOPA Government Affairs says if you encounter interference, you should let ATC know. If it poses a safety of flight issue, they can get the testing shut off immediately. In addition to reporting to air traffic control, uh, pilots should also either file a NASA ASRS report following a GPS interference event or file an anomaly report. Um, if you just Google FAA anomaly report, it will pull up uh, exactly what you want. Uh, that goes directly to the FAA and their GPS WAS command center, and they respond to those and generally will follow up with pilots and help them identify if there was interference testing at the time or if there was some other event. Remember, always check the NOTAMs before you fly. And over the last 80 years, there's been a lot of changes in general aviation, and AOPA has been there to see them and initiate some of them. It's all there in Freedom to Fly, a special large format hardbound coffee table book that documents both AOPA's and general aviation's colorful history. More than 280 pages of stunning photography and compelling stories highlight airplanes and events in general aviation's history. And if you order the book by December 5th, you'll get free shipping and it will arrive before Christmas. More information at aopa.org slash freedom to fly book. And we're sad to have to tell you that a giant of aviation journalism recently flew west, one who witnessed much of the aviation history outlined in our book. Jack Elliott Shapiro died on November 20th at the age of 94. He was better known by his pen name, Jack Elliott. He wrote a weekly column, Wings Over Jersey, that ran in the Newark Star-Ledger for nearly 40 years. He compiled many of those columns into his book, Adventures in Flying. He also wrote for many aviation publications, including AOPA Pilot. AOPA honored him twice with a presidential citation and a Max Carrant Journalism Award. You can read more about Jack on our website. Godspeed, Jack Elliott. You know, Jack truly was one of the, the great uh, gentlemen and giants of aviation journalism. I was privileged to know Jack and Max Karen and, and Charlie Spence, right. all gone, will never never be replaced. Right, yep, another another that great generation, and like I said, we just uh, lock, lost uh, Charlie Spence not that long ago, kind of. And the great thing about Jack's column in the Star-Ledger was that it reached the general public, right? You know, we all talk to pilots, right? And he had this great uh, um, a, a mouthpiece, if you will, to talk to the general public about uh, what you can do with the general aviation airplane, the places you can go, and, and what a wonderful experience it is to, to just go out and fly. And uh, so that that was very helpful. Yeah, every nearly forty years, every Sunday in the Star Ledger. Right. Yeah. We'll miss you, Jack. So if you're about to set off on a record-breaking flight over both poles, what do you need to consider? Well, last week I told you about Robert De Laurentiis and his plan to circle the world from south to north, and this week I look at some of the special modifications to his airplane to make that solo circumnavigation flight possible. Hi, I'm Robert De Laurentiis, send pilot, and this is the citizen of the world. She's being prepared for a polar circumnavigation starting December 15th, 2018. The plane's been highly modified, and we're gonna show you some of those modifications. I'm gonna to talk to you about some of the preparations I've been making over the last 14 months that can help you as a general aviation pilot. There are several things that make this trip even possible. It's the combination of a very long wing, very high-tech propellers, and zero-time Honeywell TPE 331-10T engines. When Gulfstream bought the rights to build the plane from Rockwell, they extended the wing 10 feet. They also added a winglet. When we decided that we were going to do the trip, we went to MT Propeller and asked them to design a custom propeller. We needed the most efficient propeller that was available today. So what they came up with was a five-bladed, nickel-tip, scimitar composite propeller. It's lighter, it's quieter, and it eliminated the vibration that was typical on these planes. The next thing, we went to SeaTech, which is Copper State Turbine Engine Company, and had them rebuild the engines. Now, they added several new components that Honeywell had come out with, and these are 1,000 horsepower engines derated to 750, but we're getting 1,150 out of one and 1,147 out of another. As general aviation pilots, we've been told never to put more weight in the plane than its maximum gross weight. But in order to extend the range of the plane, we needed to add a great deal more fuel. So we went to the original engineer who designed the wing for Gulfstream, and he did a feasibility study. 
and he told us that we could go 40% over the maximum gross weight, which meant adding another 935 gallons of Jet A fuel. So you might ask, where are you gonna put the fuel? One place is inside the passenger compartment of the plane where we'll have five extra aluminum tanks. And then there'll be a six tank back in the luggage compartment on the back side of the plane. So that'll extend our range out to approximately 24 hours and 5,000 nautical miles. One of the very special things about the Citizen of the World is its avionics panel. We've installed a full Avidyne panel complete with the IFD 550, which displays inputs from the Max Viz 1400 infrared camera. Navigating over the South and North Poles is very challenging. To do that, we've installed a directional gyro with a metal ball spinning at 15,000 RPM. So we'll dead reckon. In addition to that, typically GPS systems fail as well as the magnetic compass. Now, Avidyne has simulated flights over the South and North Poles and not had any problems at all. In addition to that, we'll place a GPS waypoint before the pole and after the pole. That'll help us avoid that issue altogether. In the 14 months that I've been preparing for this polar circumnavigation, I've learned many things that are useful to general aviation pilots as well. One of them, or a series of them, are the physical preparations that you can make. I strongly suggest that every general aviation pilot take a survival class every year. The other thing you have to consider as a general aviation pilot is your physical health. For me, anything that was a distraction in the cockpit needed to be dealt with. So when I was pushing on the rudder pedals, if I had a problem with pain because of ingrown toenails, it made sense to get that taken care of. The other thing is, do you consider yourself a pilot athlete? Pilots are athletes that play in the game of life and death and they can't afford to lose once. So it makes sense to be eating right, sleeping well, and getting as much exercise as you can. Getting your heart rate up is all critical. One of my concerns about flying over the South Pole is survival in the event the plane goes down. Now with modern technology, EPIRBs and personal locator beacons, help will know where you are within about three minutes. The problem is them getting to you. Helicopters don't have the range, fuel is not pre-positioned. So you have to be prepared to survive in Antarctica for up to two weeks. And I have the required survival gear and training to do exactly that. Often when I talk about the polar circumnavigation, talk about a group of people, or I say we, and that's the team that supports me. Any trip this big, this epic, this expensive requires the skill set of many people. We have a social media expert, we have a world peace expert, I have a survival expert, I have a commercial airline pilot with 20,000 hours of flight time. To get a trip like this done, it takes a team. Now Robert's going to leave December 15th, you know, weather permitting. And I thought it was kind of interesting that he went to the engineer who had designed the wing so he could figure out how much more he could put into the aircraft. Right. Uh, yeah, and that's a significant uh, overgrowth situation that he's on. Obviously, he's got it uh, you know, well vetted and, and, and approved and that sort of thing. But it is going to be a challenging flight for sure. So good luck to you, Roberts. Indeed. Well, that's all for this edition. We hope to see you back again next week. And don't be a stranger. Let us know what you think about the show. Shoot us a note via AOPA Live at AOPA.org. The AOPA World MasterCard delivers competitive cashback rewards in all of your favorite aviation categories. That's 4% cashback on AOPA purchases, 3% back on select AOPA partner purchases, 2% back at FBOs plus fuel and taxis, and 1% back on everything else, everywhere, every day. Apply now for the AOPA World MasterCard, the best card for pilots.